Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium free crypto update. One day we will have Hopium filled content, but until then, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see that Hopium filled content come up on your newsfeed. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on Twitter as well for daily crypto updates. I saw a lot of you followed after the last videos on altcoins. Uh, that really does help out a lot so I can update you easier and quicker over there. So if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll leave a link to this learn crypto and Bitcoin here. You guys have been asking for crypto exit plans. I do have some older videos on there. All of the data is still relevant, but I will do an update as well. But in the meantime, if you want to check out that video, I'll leave a link to it at the end of this one. So make sure you stick around and see it at the end. All right. Patreon is still available. 24 left. If you've been following daily, you're seeing that about five to probably seven or eight are going per day. If you're interested in learning more about cryptocurrency trading and investing, check it out down below. There is a link at the top of this video. First things first, let's look at some of the big stuff which we're seeing trends changing in Bitcoin. As we're looking at on the title today, we've got important cycle things coming up for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets. Obviously, September and then also quarter four is big. But we've got a, a report here from F uh, Fidelity Digital Assets, appeal of digital assets. This is increasing over time. This is a good thing to see. We definitely want the appeal to continue because that obviously brings more people into the space, pushes up the demand. And of course, we know the supply is limited. So easy one there, supply and demand. Uh, in this survey, almost nine in 10 respondents said they find digital assets appealing 86%. This figure has grown across regions surveyed in prior years. So in the US, it's gone from 65% in 2019 to 74% and now to this year at 78%. So we're still getting that increase and hopefully by the end of the year, we're still getting a steady uh, increase just like we saw from 2019 to 2020. We can see in Europe, it's gone from 76 to 89. That's a huge jump, whereas the US only had a smaller jump. And for Asia, we've only got data from this year. It's gone to 92% of Asian investors like the appeal of digital assets. This is really important coming up, especially if we're starting to swing into this next stage of the bull market and the cycle continues on. We need to get a lot more people into the space and have real appeal to the assets that they're investing in. So the appeal of digital assets, high potential upside, 43%. So 43% of re respondents they said they like the high potential upside. What do you like? What I mean, what is the appeal for you guys that are investing in cryptocurrencies? Leave it in the comments down below. I've got a, a, a pinned post, which is my official post down there, not the scammers. Uh, and just leave your comments down there. What is your appeal to cryptocurrencies? Obviously, everyone wants to make money, but you've got to have something more to it than just that. Otherwise, you won't stick with it when the market gets really tough. Uh, viewing digital assets as an innovative technology, that was second. And then third was the appeal of digital assets as uncorrelated to other assets that ranked third. So just over one third of people thought that, so 37%. So uncorrelate, uncorrelated just means that they believe the market moves differently to the stock market or other financial markets, maybe even real estate. They think it is uncorrelated so you can balance your risk out in that regard. The other appeal of digital assets, we go down the list, first, second, third, and then fourth is enable decentralization. That's a really big one in, in my personal opinion, especially with what's going on in the world at the moment. If we can decentralize governments and governance, then hopefully we can lead to better times. I think that's what the younger generations are definitely looking for. Free from government intervention, macro inflation upside, so with all of the inflation that's been happening, obviously money printing, this looks like it could be one of those uh, investments that can save you from all of the, in the upside, well, save you from the inflation of your currency that you're holding. Arbitrage opportunities, censorship resistant, yield opportunities, and participating in the DeFi ecosystem. So there's a few ideas. If you're wanting to leave your comments down below, drop it down there. If you had other ideas, I'd also love to hear that. It's really interesting as to why people are getting into the market now. For example, 2021 rather than 2017 when the bull market was on or 2013, you know, maybe we just didn't hear about it. Why? You know, it's very interesting to see the trend of the market. So the cycle, let's review and reflect on September again. We've got 11 years of data, about 12, 11 to 12 years. September 2010, not much happened. We were up and down and the market ended 
about 3% up. Not too much going on there. So that's September. What happened in October in the next part of the, the year? Well, October was a strong month up. Then November and December. We got 2011. It was a down month. And then the quarter four had a major turning point. 2012. September didn't really do much. It was just an inside month. It was up. It had about 20% up, but there was no higher high or lower low. What did the next quarter do? Actually, not too much. It still was a turning point, and then the market took off into the first quarter of the following year. September in 2013, again, not much. Basically sideways, 1% uh, negative. And then what happened in quarter four in 2013? Market exploded. October took off, then November took off, and then we had the turning point uh, from December. December came back down. So 2014, again, September was down. What happened next? October, November, only a little bump here. 2015, September, nothing. You've seen the pattern here. And then the, the quarter took off. October, November, we really took off. There was 36% up and then another 17% up. And then into uh, December was 13% up. So there's three months in a row. September 2016, not too much. Very tiny month. You can barely see it here. It's the blue line. And then the, th the fourth quarter, good, strong move. We're up 16%, 5%, then 30%. Each month, strong up. September, we had a reversal. This was in 2017. And then we know what happened in 2017. Market took off to a new all-time high in December. So strong quarter four. September in 2018, this was in the bear market. Nothing much. Sideways, waiting on a signal from the market. Quarter four gave us that signal again. It wasn't straight up, but it was straight down. So we still got major action in quarter four. The point here is a lot of energy seems to be in the market in quarter four. But for September, traditionally, historically, not much really happens. September 2019, a little bit of a breakdown. Not too much happened for this quarter because we had just shot up for those first two quarters of the year. 2020, so just last year as well, just the final quarter of the year. September, the reversal, the best final time to buy before the market took off into quarter four. Are we going to see something like that again this time? I think that's what the market is preparing to do. Obviously, we could go through and get one of these other months where it's just a bit of a sideways guessing game for a period. But obviously, the market will have to eventually break out. And so far for me, the bias is to the upside. I think that's still where we are headed. But even if we take a little bit more time, that's good. It gives us more time to uh, position ourselves in the market. Speaking of positioning ourselves in the market, investing should be more like watching paint dry or watching grass grow. If you want excitement, take 800 bucks and go to Las Vegas. Paul Samuelson, so also a well-known economist, investor. This is a very important quote, especially for cryptocurrency. Now, we can take the 800 bucks and go to Las Vegas and have the excitement, but I know a lot of people would rather throw the money into Shiba Inu or some other meme NFT thing. So be it. But at least if that's just part of your gambling portfolio, your trading, the rest of it, in my opinion, of course, for something uh, being in the game for a while and something that has longevity to it, conservative in the space, make sure your investments are like watching paint dry. Buying Bitcoin, buying Ethereum, buying whichever cryptocurrency you think will be here in five or 10 years time, that should be very, very boring. And this just goes on to something that we have seen regularly, and that is HBAR. Okay, so that was something that was coming up a lot on my comments, everyone's saying, why aren't you talking about HBAR? Talk about Hedera Hashgraph, yada, yada, yada. All right, nothing against the project. I know people love it. They, they hold it. They want the thing to do very, very well. We got the big news. This was a couple of days ago. $5 billion in HBAR tokens to boost network adoption. I'm sure people were going really nuts about this news because this has been everywhere. I've seen it posted everywhere. What happened in the chart? It went crazy from where it was at about $0.30 cents to nearly $0.60, cents, call it $0.58. Cents. And what do, we, what do we find now? We find the market all the way back down at 40 cents. Now, we do have a couple of days left until the end of this week. So, this is a macro picture. The, the moves on smaller timeframes like a 15-minute chart or an hourly chart, they're for micro moves in the market. If you want macro moves, big moves, the hundreds of percent, thousands of percent, look at the, the bigger timeframes, the larger timeframes, the longer-term timeframes, the weekly charts. All right, we talk about that all the time. So, I hadn't talked about HBAR because I saw it just taking off and 
I don't think that's I don't like it as a good idea to be talking about something when it's already really really far gone uh, although the upside or the positive that you want to see in a market is like we always talk about if the market can break into new all-time highs and then consolidate above the old all-time highs that needs to happen because it's a psychological play in the market if this thing is to fall under the 50 percent level which lines up very well with all of the previous all-time high bodies of the candle that's under 36 cents then you're probably looking at a longer accumulation period and this might not go so well as a longer term investment and it's just a speculative play it's it's this here taking your 800 dollars to las vegas h bar is the las vegas at the moment shoot up get your double get the hell out of there that's a trade all right and i know i'm going to get slammed with people who say you got no idea about the fundamentals it's a really good, strong, long-term project that does X, Y, Z, etc. I've seen it so many times. You're wrong at this one. I know. Maybe I am. I'm happy to be wrong at it. That's fine. Just looking at what the market has done is not something that I would be looking at, especially because of the pattern that's forming right now. And I see this on some of the cryptos that I've uh, that I also hold, and so I'm not getting overly excited about them. For example, and this could be short-term. All right, ADA, Cardano. We've talked about this. We were expecting it, so it's not too much of an issue. The idea here is, and this could go for HBAR too. I know that was a lot of negative talk there. I know people get a little bit offended by the negative talk, but if you want to be realistic about your investments, and the same thing goes for ADA here. We want to see this hold up above its 50% level. You should know by now how important the 50% level is. 36 cents at least, at the very worst, hold above this zone. So stay in this zone to form a higher low to then try to new high prices. That's what we want to see. That's the the upside, the positive, the good side of the chart if we can see that. And the same deal goes for ADA. Remember, these are the areas that we're watching. Ideally, I don't want to see it break beneath two bucks because that obviously is for one, a psychological level. Two, it's a 50% level of a major range. And if I have a third, then I've got a swing low that's coming in at about uh, $1.90 to $1.87. So there are the old highs through uh, May and June. And you can see that that is just lining up with that swing low. And that's where we don't want to see the market crash back under because this would be taking out major support. So we do have that support around $1.80 to 2 bucks. So wicks are okay meaning the wick of the candle or the, the bar drops down and comes back above, no problems. And we definitely want to see it consolidate above these levels of $2. So anywhere in here is looking good. And then you can see my diagonal level here. This is just holding the market up the whole way down at the moment. We're just not getting any closes above it. If we can, that would be lovely. It can still fade, but at least we have stopped this angle of decline. So that's the same sort of picture we're seeing here. The market broke to a new all-time high couldn't hold above the old all-time high and it's just started to find resistance at 50% and then start to make its way a little bit lower. So these are my last lines of support here, that $1.80 to around that two bucks, two twenty. Now, if that all sounded way too bearish as an ADA holder, never fear. I also hold ADA. Sometimes these markets go down. That's just part of the game. Should we get some nice holding levels here, some nice support then I like that as dollar cost averaging. I'd rather dollar cost averaging lower prices than way up the top. The breakouts are nice, but we definitely want to see the market keep going. And for now, maybe it just needs some time to rest. We can see that there's more being built on ADA and we need to go through those steps. That, to me, what I've seen will come and it just takes time. So for me, not stressing and just looking for more dollar cost averaging in on ADA at this point in time. So as you can see, these cryptocurrencies are things that I hold in my portfolio. You guys that are in Patreon would know that. You'd see that on the posts that I put up in the group. So if you're interested, uh, check out the links down below for Patreon right at the top there in the video description. And these are all things that I hold. I am happy talking about them in a negative way because I'm just being realistic with what I'm seeing on the chart. We've talked about it. They go down. Unfortunately, if they're in this zone, then I just have to expect longer in that period before the takeoff. Obviously, if we're holding higher up and we consolidate, then we'll probably get the takeoff a little sooner. That's just the difference there. One is about patience. Well, the whole thing is essentially about patience. And so with that, with your patience, thank you very much for watching. 
Uh, remember, all the links are down below. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Stick around till the end of the video and you'll see the link there for the playlist of crypto exit plans and $1,000 to invest. I'll catch you guys at the next one. Have a great weekend. I'll see you then. Until then, have more fun to get more done.